you're, yeah, you know, you're exactly right. That's coming. Because you can imagine our corporations desperately. <laughs> and it, it's called securities for this reason. So, a security is this. Just imagine why they call it securities. Let's say you had a million dollars. Right? Who, has, I mean, who has this problem? You have a bunch of like $20, $100 bills, a million dollars worth, right? You have them in a jar, right? And you walk around the street with your jar of a million dollars. <laughs> is that secure? No. No, because what's going to happen? I'm just going to take it. Yeah. In fact, talk to Partridge Incorporated. We can invest by company. We take care of things like that. We have hammers. So, or you think, I'm going to hide it under my mattress. Is that really secure? No. No, we know where it's at. But if you take that money and put it in someplace safe, like technically you buy a stock, now your money is not with you, so now you have a piece of paper saying it's worth something. Or a bond. Or for that matter, do, does anyone have a savings account? What do you get in return? A piece of paper saying the bank owes you money. That's a security. So the money is safe. Hmm? Well, bonds are a little bit different too. Bonds. Bonds are just the way we all say governments, but also businesses borrow money by issuing bonds. Wait, so when you like deposit a check, it goes to the bank, and you use that money, but the bank still says that you have that mm -hmm. what, what, You know what the bank says? The bank says, if you let's say you deposit $25 yeah. in your checking account, yeah. your savings account, the bank is saying, I owe you $25. That's a liability to the bank. Because the banks will keep that money, you know, they, they rent. Is, is there enough paper money for all of the electronic money? In the oh, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Money's imaginary. That's what Just close your eyes and click your heels together three times. <laughs> so, but what happened was, companies begin to find ways around these laws. Remember, they all want to act like monopolies. One of the biggie, and this has been around since people have been selling goods. It's called a pool. Think about a bunch of competitors. When the first, or one of the really big pools was the first subway systems in New York. That's why I have a picture of the old subway. It was pulled by a rope. But all these competitors come together and they make a secret agreement. We all agree that we're not going to undercut it, undercut each other. We set a price floor. And we all agree we won't go under that floor, so we all make money. Does that make sense? That's a pool. Now, this is illegal. It's fraud. You're defrauding the consumer. So this is, in fact, it breaks many different laws, a pool. So this is a secret agreement. And so all the, the first subways were all independent companies, and they all agreed because it's so expensive to make. We're going to kind of all agree to overcharge a little bit, but we all make money. You see this in a lot of businesses. The problem is they're weak because since it's illegal, what's going to happen? One company just say, eh, I'm going to undercut. What are you going to do about it? And the pool falls apart. All it takes is one company to destroy it. And that always happens. Because what can you do? Go to the police and say, hey, you broke our illegal agreement. You can't do it. And so pools are inherently weak. By the way, if you start a pool and have that trouble, who do you contact? Part for Gene, we take care of that. <laughs> My corporation invested in me. In New York City in the 1920s and 30s, there was a group of uh, gangsters got together off of, I think it's the Genovese. Genovese. Mob family. And they called themselves Murder Inc. Murder <laughs> Incorporated. Guess what they sold? <laughs> and the more money you paid, Wait, what did they sell? The more awful the money was. Holy, that's what? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not saying Parker Jink is doing that, but we have we take care of it. So, back to this. You might notice something, though. Some states actually have pools for businesses in their own states that, that's pooled by law. Montana has this for something that probably all of you have done ever got gas. Every gas station in a community, and they also count the area outside of it, by law are in a pool. Have you noticed gasoline prices are always the same? Okay, they make some exceptions for uh, like a club, 
for a couple of things like Costco, if you're in the clubs, a little bit lower. But every other gas station, the gas prices are the same. From town to town. Hmm? From yeah, town. in town. So Helena and its vicinity, all the same. I like a couple of things. And you, you, you might see like uh, out in the valley a little bit higher because they're, they have kind of a monopoly, so they raise the price, but they can't undercut. And so you, so Missoula might be one or two cents different, but they're all different. And it's kind of funny, but you go and see one gas station and the price is like four cents lower than everybody else. By the end of the day, every other gas station will be that price. Who, who, does that help? It helps both big and small, but is that designed to help small companies or the big ones? Mm -hmm. Small. Because economies of scale, smaller companies have smaller companies have higher costs, so to make sure that the big companies can't undercut them. So that's what Montana has. So pool, I mean, it's you can see why that happens. Our entire agricultural, uh, almost all of our agriculture in the United States is pool. So with that, another way, <laughs> even more illegal but bigger are called trusts and trusts were this smaller companies would be convinced to turn their stocks over to a common board of trustees that's the term trust smaller companies and who controls the common board of trustees the really big company you're gonna if you look you'll find so many pictures of the standard oil trust in many different cartoons, almost always has a monster. I showed you that one yesterday of a snake. So smaller companies turn over their stock, not ownership, but control of the stock to a common board of trustees, and they would get this in return. So technically, the small companies are independent, but they're controlled by the bigger company. They would become so big and powerful by the 1880s they're synonymous with monopoly. So many times when those say trust, they mean monopoly or something that's going to act like a monopoly. A company has a monopoly if they have about 60 to 70 percent of a market. So it doesn't mean all of it, it just means about 60 or 70 percent. When I mean a market like of uh, the oil, oil market, you know, oh, 60 percent of the gas station, 60 percent of the frozen concentrated orange juice market, which I know I get right to the root of what matters to all of you. Wait, so, isn't this what Disney is done? Sure we're coming to it. <laughs> like Pixar would be the Titan company. Almost. But companies hated this because this was illegal and they had to do all kinds of jump through a bunch of hoops to hide this because every state, this violated every state law. Yeah. So, does that mean that like, you can technically consider Northwestern energy as like a modern day monopoly? Oh, yeah. So, By definition, oh, yeah, it's a monopoly. And trusts are illegal? They're very illegal. I know, I know. They would give a piece of paper. It was a whole charade to act like the companies are still independent. But it was illegal. And a couple things about it. We'll get to it. And that means you're going to come up with combinations. They're going to start absorbing other companies. Two different types of combinations. We just basically call them vertical integration, or you could say vertical trust, or vertical monopoly. And what it means is vertical, you control all the means of production. So here's like, Swift, who stopped at Swift and meatpacking. And what did Swift own? The cattle, the slaughterhouses, the refrigerated cars, the warehouses, meatpacking, delivery wagons. He owned the whole thing from bottom up. Carnegie, he owned the coal, the coal and iron mines. He controlled the railroads. He controlled the mills. He controlled the distribution. That's vertical. From the bottom, the base of production, all the way to the top. Horizontal, when we think of monopolies, that's horizontal. And that's all the alike industry. Like John D. Rockefeller had 97% of the oil refineries under his control by 1900. Or Cornelius Vanderbilt controlled the New York Central Railroad, that lucrative route from New York to Chicago. Horizontal and vertical. In fact, the, the names I told you, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Swift, Carnegie, those are just examples. But you'll find Rockefeller was horizontal, but he was vertical too. He made deals to control the railroads, as this cartoon shows of him, standing on the oil, but as the railroads all the way up to production, and that's his crown. That's him later in life. And so you're right.
that's what um, Disney is both horizontal and vertical. Yeah. Could you go back? Could. Could. Uh, what if it was vertical? Okay, so horizontal is monopoly and vertical is a. Well, they're, they're both technically different forms of monopolies, but when we think of monopolies, we think of this. But here, it controls all the means of production from the bottom to the top. So they don't have to buy from another company, they have it all. So, in a way, that's a monopoly, too. Now, that's why you know Northwest Energy wants to buy, uh, they control the hydroelectric power plants. They control the pots. And you know, Ford controls many of the component companies that make the components of the cars. Horizontal and vertical. So, you these are called trusts. Now, yeah, everyone no, remember, or noticing how, wait a minute, there's like trusts all the time now. Well, we got to come to one thing really quick. Two things, I lied. First thing, one thing about this. Imagine if you're a banker and you loan money to these different companies. You loan money. What do you want? You loan money. Why? You want your money back plus your interest, right? What happens if the corporation goes out of business? See, we've noticed it. Do you notice the problem with corporations? They go out of business. Banks might not what? If there's a panic or com companies go into cultural competition and drive someone out of business, they don't get their money back. And that is going to lead to another form, like a trust in a pool. And it's going to be out of finance and investment banking. Investment bankers, those are the banks that invest in stock. When we think of bank, we think of commercial banks. Like you go down the road, there's Valley Bank and, and Stockman's Bank and banks like that. We give like home loans. We put our savings account, that's commercial. J.P. Morgan Chase, that's also an investment bank. J.P. Morgan, and by the way, all these Robert Barons want to act like they're accountants. So you see them in Commodore's hats all the time. And they're yacht. I have to say they my yacht. I have no idea how they did it. How I did it. So they spread out risky investments. That was the plan. You know, they're going to make investments. Morgan did not want to just invest in the New York Central Railroad. He wanted to invest in other railroads that went in that area, like the huge Pennsylvania, or the Erie, or the B&O Railroad. Yes, they're all the monopoly. They're all real railroads. The short line was a real one, too. What's the other one of monopoly? Short line, B&O, Reading. Is it the short line? No. The B-N and H? Do we have to play a monopoly one day and then get into a big fist fight? So, what his strategy is called interlocking directorates. He would loan money to, let's say, a railroad, like the Pennsylvania Railroad. And then Morgan would demand his people on their board of directors. And then he'd loan money to a competitor of the Pennsylvania, like the B&O. And he would put his people on the board of directors. And then he'd loan money to another competitor, like the New York Central and put his people on the board of directors saying, I'll give you your money, but I want two of my lawyers on there. And therefore, it's kind of like a pool, isn't it? With having Morgan's influence on competitors, they won't go crazy and undercut each other and drive themselves out of business, and therefore, who will always get their money? The bank. The, the bank, Morgan. Yeah. He wanted to control cutthroat competition. Remember risk, to take the risk out of it. This is actually the law placed by Germany and Japan. Their central bank and from other national government. Every big corporation has to have somebody from the German central bank, like Mercedes and Volkswagen, you know, all their, their companies, they must have somebody from the German central bank on their board of directors. Also in Germany, they must have somebody who represents the workers who work there to make sure the interests of the country will be will not be ignored, so they can't do whatever they want to make money. Is this illegal? This? Yes, but it's harder to prove because you're not actually taking control, you're just putting individuals on there. And so it's harder to control. But what place or get holding companies? New Jersey in 1888. Beautiful New Jersey. Remember New Jersey? New Jersey is jealous of what city? They still are. Philadelphia. New York City. 
New York City, right across the Hudson River, is New York City. I'm surprised you didn't say Billings. Isn't everybody jealous of Billings? Don't you love Billings in the fall when the sugar plants are just really rolling? Smells like that. But moving on, the big city. And so New Jersey was jealous of all the money and finance and mansions and everything. In fact, New Jersey was kind of treated like a joke. A bunch of hicks who live in a cow pasture. So in 1888, <laughs> New Jersey changed their laws to encourage business in. And how do you do that? Because they want to live in New York City. Companies want to get big. And so what they said is, they changed their law to corporations to allow other corporations. And once corporations can allow other corporations, by the way, what do we call a corporation that owns other corporations? A holding company. So when you mention Disney, Disney's a holding company. I should add, the Republicans took control of the, of the New Jersey legislature years before this, but their Democratic governor, three-term governor, kept vetoing this, and then he passed away. So it's only legal in New Jersey? It is in by the way, all of you know that governor. In 1862, he was responsible for, um, by being so cautious, blowing a chance to Detroit Lee's army in Antietam. And then he would run for president in 1864. Yes, yeah, George McClellan. Isn't that wild? Like I said, full circle. Well, he failed. I mean, it depends on your point of view. If you want corporation, you know, a few people to have all the money, then he failed you. If you want money to be more spread out, then he, he was good. <laughs> In that way. <laughs> Depends on your point of view. But McClellan died. And what happened? It's going to take a few years. But all of a sudden, companies realize, if we just go set up an office there. We can now publicly buy all these corporations. They don't have to go through the charade of a trust or pools. Just buy them. There's no oil in New Jersey. But Rockefeller moved his headquarters to New Jersey, right across the river, Standard Oil of New Jersey, and bought all the companies that were in the trust, now just absorbed them. And this allowed companies to get huge, and other companies followed to New Jersey. And what about the other states when they looked at this? Wait a second, they're all going to New Jersey. And what did they do? Over the next 10 years, every single state raced to give corporations even more. And this is going to lead to massive consolidation and just a few companies controlling everything. Did they do that so their economy would be less than New Jersey? Well, it's arguable this actually makes their economy better by doing this. Have you been to northern New Jersey? Uh, no. Oh. Northern New Jersey is like a big toxic place. Oh. They all came in and it was like a free fall. Okay. They just people just did whatever they wanted. Okay. So New Jersey, but a few people got rich and left ruin behind. But if you got rich, so if you want to get rich, you let the companies in. So, oh, so that's why the same thing. And you can imagine what happened. Corporations just started giving money off the state legislatures. Once oh, they opened the door, happen. yeah. And, by the way, Standard Oil, being a, uh, even though the monopoly would broke up, not, broke it up somewhat, when they started gas stations for Standard Oil, it'd go under the SO name, right? What's SO stand for? Yeah. S O S O Standard Oil. That's all. And in 1977, they, as a marketing gimmick, they changed their name to make it more eye-catching. What did they change their name to? Exxon. They added the X's for the S's, and, and there, there was already a company called Exo, so they added an N, just so they get that double X thing to look good on the sign. Yeah. And now they're a big gasoline monopoly. They're back to being a monopoly again. And we create a phenomenon called oligopolies. Oligopolies. Well, have you ever heard of a term called oligarchy? Oligarchy means government by just a few people, usually a few rich people. That's an oligarchy. So what do you suppose an oligopoly is? A market that's controlled by what? Just a few companies. Just a few companies. And it's a market controlled by a few companies. So you think about a monopoly is just one, an oligarchy is just three, three or four. But it acts like a monopoly. It's very close to a monopoly. 
So we are controlled by monopolies and oligarchies in the U.S. Are we talking like when you say the market? Do you mean just like one specific yeah, market I, or like the whole like, it, market? Just one specific market, so like the oil market, the car okay. market. But, so it's like a monopoly, but owned by fewer people. A monopoly is one company. Oligarchy, oligarchy is three or four companies, but it operates essentially like okay. a monopoly. And one more thing happened at the same exact time. The Supreme Court ruled on the case in California, Santa Clara versus uh, Southern Pacific. But what they ruled was this. And it's a very convoluted rule. And they actually didn't rule this, but it got written in there. Corporations have all the rights of people under the 14th Amendment. Remember the 14th Amendment is the most important amendment of the Constitution. It guarantees all of you civil rights, due process of the law. And the scary thing, which is actually, I mean, this and this will come to the court in the next couple of years, citizenship. Now, it was never 100% the corporations were citizens. I mean, that's still a gray area, but in the last 20 years, especially 2010, we have a very conservative Supreme Court, and they have ruled that corporations basically have all the rights of people now, and more. And I should add a little qualifier to that. Since women are not guaranteed equal rights, that means corporations have more rights under the Constitution than people. I mean, than women. What, women are people, but men are too. Yeah. What would they use rights for? Like, yeah. I don't. Legal rights. They have all. So they have all the legal rights you do. But yeah. Not even yeah. Exactly. So what are they going to use the rights for? <laughs> How do you arrest them? How do you stop them? Yeah. Can they contribute to politicians? Can they? Yeah. Well, now, but why do they do? They can do now and then. Why? Yeah. And here's the thing. As far as I know, corporation. I, my guess is most of you have a soul. <laughs> right? No, most of you are humans. Don't you have you have certain you, you you have emotions, you actually unless you're a psychopath or a sociopath, you care about other people, you want them to do well. Do corporations have that attitude? No, they won't. Yes. Just imagine what corporations are. Corporations are like citizens who are by definition sociopaths. Mm -hmm. And they have just as much, if not pop, more power, because they don't die. You know, sure they might go out of business, but they're still standard oil. It's called Exxon now. It's still here. All of us are slowly but surely leaving. They're still here. And so, look what the result of this. A wave of mergers are going to happen. It's going to take a couple of years, but then the first big merger mania. And this graph goes up to 1910. You see merger mania again in the 20s. You'll see it again in the 80s. And now we are, I mean, Companies are consolidating so fast, it's hard to even wrap your mind around. What company just basically bought, what company just bought Fox, all of their media, except for their news? Disney. And Disney is one massive oligarchy. And what does it mean if you have everything operating like a monopoly? Really fast, what does it mean? Intense concentration of wealth. Whoever has the bull stock in the corporations, they have the most wealth and power. What's that? Just money. Oh yeah, money and power. Think about all the stuff that Fox owns. By the way, think about their power. They're trying to all look at all their movies. They have a patent on, it. and they're extending the patent so they control me even longer. The whole big free trade agreement with Mexico that was just passed in the Senate, all of that is about giving companies like Disney even more uh, monopolies. That's the whole thing. I know. I can't But also, I know whenever, then I look at everything just I'm pretty good at avoiding it. By the way, I don't blame you for letting me call out Santa Barbara. Oh, I just, I can't believe you. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Yeah. It's yours. It's for everybody. It's just hard because, like, it's just hard because, like, nobody's getting the place for it. 
like they all just kind of walk away. Right. So I don't understand why banks would invest. Is that why banks do? Because it's like why some people can't start corporations? Because like the banks don't have oh, sure. the lenders. Because the banks will loan money to everybody. Right. But also, your banks know if they make money. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
He did so mean. Yeah, they're the president. We'll do the, I think yeah. that's what you guys watch, right? Do the president's yeah. first, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Are we finished the movie? Yeah. Okay, all right. What does the end mean? Non-partisan? No partisan. All right, guys. Go ahead and finish up any ones you have, or if you have any questions to ask, then I'll ask them. What did your teeth in the movie? Yeah, the suburbs. Okay. Because you don't get the free silver thing. And the thing about free silver, it wasn't that free silver could solve the problems by clicking her heels together. It wasn't that. But the big issue was is that we have the power as people in a democracy to make the change. We, if we want free silver and inflation and greenbacks, we have that power. So it's if the people want free silver, we can do it. But it does take away, you know, if you hear Ruby and then with the Ruby, you lose out the, that populist catch. Yeah. How does the song Summer of the Label as the movie mentioned in the night in many ways fit nicely into the movie? What does this all for the rainbow mean? Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere there's a better life. We could have a better life. We could make ourselves a better life. And the realization that kind of we can bring it back here if we do it ourselves. And they were going to take that movie out. And the last, they, they did it, they put it in there, and it's like the most iconic song in the movie. And then they, like, oh, we'll do that. And, I mean, God, I still can't believe, you know, of course, it would be kind of fun watching Toto as some grown man following her kind of creepily. Yes. How does the wizard behave? How does this convey Bond's view of politics and populism? So what what does the wizard do before? When they first came in out of the fire and smoke, what happened? He was asking, you know, making demands, talking now like he can solve all the problems, boasting, acting really powerful, and in reality, what he what was he really? Yeah, some guy acting more big. Yeah, some dude. But you pull back the curtain, you see the reality. They're just a person. And populists, remember, that's the People's Party. Remember what they said, the great odd. What happened? What happened when Dorothy, when the wizard did, oh, sorry, the witch did surrender Dorothy? And what did everybody do? Run to the wizard, he'll help us. Like the wizard is some kind of all powerful thing. Was the wizard all powerful? It was all an act. Who has the power? The, po the people. The populace means the people. Yes? So, Cyclone and Yeah, Cyclone. The only thing about Cyclone was change is coming. That's change. And that's what they called Mary Lee's, the, pro the prairie uh, tornado, the prairie cyclone. The prairie cyclone. And water, what do farmers need? Water. I mean, something very basic and simple that we all have can solve all our problems. If you watch that the first time, would you ever guess water alone would kill the witch? Something basic we all have. We all can do it. But that's the whole thing. Something so elemental, important. Yes? Um, the five travelers on the road and Emerald City. Where were the five travelers? Coxie's Army. And the Emerald City, what is that? Yeah, the, the capital, but it's Washington, D.C. Where it implies all the problems could be solved there. It all looked great. You notice how they all cleaned them up and how amazing it was? By the way, did you notice the wizard? And of course, the fortune teller. And who else? The guy at the door, the guy with the horse, and the guard in front of the wizard were all the same man. All he did five people. Yes. Also, number eight, what made you change the movie damage? damages the symbolism? Once right. we accept out, but it's having silver instead of, or ruby instead of silver. So, uh, I hope you like it. It is a great movie. It really is. But adding the extra element of populism, it just, it's neat. It kind of like, oh, wow. You know, it's, it goes from being a kid's movie to something more. Yeah. When they make a movie, they do. Yeah, right. Yes and no. Okay. You know, there have been so many different versions. Oh, by the way, Josh, you mentioned, I knew about the one in 1918 or one in 1910. They actually had to find 10 different versions. I just found that out. Little tiny, like one minute films of it and stuff like that. Cartoons, just creepy as creepy could be. They, they knew, but by the 1930s, it had just become 
um, they, they knew and did, you know, some knew, some didn't. And remember, remember, populism was also nearly 40 years before that. Yeah. What about? Oh, they represent, that's one thing about free silver. Free silver, and the idea is we have the power to make inflation if we want. By the way, of all the revelations we saw in the movie, which one would that surprise you the most? You like the scarecrow really represents like farmers. I think mean, that wasn't actually a big stretch, but which one of all those in that list? Poverty line is Brian. That's a pretty good one. Which one? Yeah, the flying monkeys is railroads. It's such a. You know what always gets me? Odds. That's ounce. That's just, oh, you know, I never even thought about it. Yeah. So on um, number five, oh. like I put the gifts down, but I didn't get what the meaning of each gift was supposed to be. Of what? It says what are the meaning of the gifts. So like the diploma, the swatch is like a heart and a little. Oh, the whole meaning about it is, is that all the things they wanted, courage, a brain, a heart, was something they already had. And so all the gifts did is a way to is is a way to make them realize they already have these things. Because they didn't. Oh, that's really funny. Did you catch that when when the scarecrow um, he gets his brain? He also has a mathematical formula. That's of a of a right triangle, and he says an isosceles triangle. No, that's that scarecrow's an idiot. Take it back. The scarecrow's dumb. But the, the two sides of a right triangle or two sides of a the square, the square of two sides of a, a nice size of these triangles. No, it's right. Don't trust the scarecrow. Don't have him do your accounting. Yes. Um, so I got that the first part, number four, Toto exposes the wizard. But what does the wizard do and say when he's and what does the symbolism? What does the wizard do and say? Yeah. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. Don't look at the reality. Look at the illusion. And that's you back one more thing about politicians. That's something Ron really understood. And we all should. Politicians are in the, their image. It's not the real person. They portray an image. And sometimes we might be offended by the image or like the image, but it's an image. Are we okay? Yeah, I put on her screen protector upside down. What's that? I put on her screen protector upside down. Well, don't do that now. Yeah. Um, is the Wizard of Oz politicians? Hmm? The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Okay. Especially McKinley. He's thinking McKinley. McKinley, I will solve all your problems but, um, with platitudes and everything else. Yeah. Oh, what's written on the balloon? Oh, written on the balloon? Omaha. Omaha. For the Omaha platform with a populist word. Fun movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, Uncle Henry. The only thing about that was here are farmers that they transfer, you know, downtrodden farmers who have just kind of given up. No, they haven't totally given up, but this is easy. And who's going to have to take over? Younger people like Dorothy and Toto. <laughs> Today it's not like that at all. Younger people we can't trust. They shouldn't have any power. Let oldsters like me get over. Because old people aren't charging them. And we've never made mistakes. We as old people. No, that's his view of politics. It's going to take half state young people. Hmm. Now, does that mean young people will do good jobs? Of course not. But, but it's going to take young people. It's going to take young. Of course, it doesn't mean they always will, but they can. The old is for the young at heart, isn't it? They're the ones who have the ability to make change. That's something for you today. It's too late for. My generation is lucky with this one. Okay, moving on. Next. <laughs> is that true? Actually, it's not my generation. I'm I'm too old. I'm from the greatest generation. We didn't do anything. <laughs> but those baby boomers <laughs> and the Gen X people, I mean, you are talk about talk about nothing more worthless than a Gen X. And then <laughs> and then millennials. All right, if there's no more questions, put your name on and hand it up. Yeah. Could we just go um, next to the 
Number two, which is talking about the characters from Kansas and then in Oz and then what they're um, what they represent symbolically. So we already know that already, but who's who's the scarecrow? Which one was he, Scarecrow? Hunk. Who, by the way, I'm really glad they didn't have Dorothy and Hunk marry at the end. That was a you. Especially when Dorothy was, was, well, yeah, she was 16. And, um, Isn't she supposed to be like a little kid in the book? Yeah, she's a little kid in the book. And then they thought for the movie, they, they thought they needed a love interest. By the way, the funny thing is, Jack Haley, who played the Scarecrow, his son married Judy Garland's daughter, Liza Minnelli. Weird. Yeah, they married. That's true. I think his name is William Haley. He was a movie producer. Liza Minnelli would be one of the great singers and actors, actors of the 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s. She's still out. Yeah. What were the witches of the North and South? The witches of the North, farmers and workers, uh, power in the South. It's it's um, Southern farmers. But back to that. The scarab or the Tin Man. Who was the Tin Man in Hickory? Who was the lion? Zeke and Miss Gold was and the wizard was yeah Professor Marvel yep yeah, the wizard there's other movies that have symbolism like that but none is it's kind of I don't know I just like the kids movie that also has pretty adult themes all right turn them in. And let's talk about food. So we got a couple different examples of Chinese food, and I'm very excited for these. I do have some plates. So, hand them up. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you got to figure out a way to wash the rice. I think it's on Netflix. So, you have Netflix? Pretty sure. Maybe it's not. If it isn't, we'll figure something out. By the way. It, um, I doubt it's on the YouTube, because trust me, somebody who remained nameless forgot to turn their camera off from fifth period, and just about three minutes of three minutes of the Wizard of Oz came on my recording of class, and boom, YouTube ended. I mean, I literally. So my Wednesday class, AP US history won't hit. So we are going to do a little bit of quack medicine before we get to that. We do have a little bit of food. I have napkins. You have to do it Thursday, and that's it, or you get a zero on, okay? Do I have an apple with All right, so we have plates, and then we have, we have a couple different types of food here. So let's start out with now, this one actually turned to be much more work than you thought. Yeah. <laughs> but it's what do we say again? Summer tea sandwiches. Summer tea sandwiches. Oh. And what's in it? Yeah, actually it looks really good. And he made you he made the chicken from scratch. You grew a chicken? Yeah, he grew a chicken. <laughs> and so we all actually uh, yeah, cooked it in a chicken breast and put it all together. It looks really good. So I want everyone to try that. And then what do we have here? Uh, they're called strawberry bricks. So what you do, I didn't want to put the filling in last night because it was a soggy roast this morning. So you dig out the middle and then put the filling in. It and put like whipped cream and strawberries on top. Ooh, that's so, so we have sandwich and dessert. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Those are fresh strawberries. Oh. All right, so we got a few minutes. We got to warm them up. We got to grab a plate. Do you need got spoons? You need spoon? Do you have a spoon for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got. So we're good. Okay. And I do have extra napkins and. and let the let the mob clear out. Did you learn a lot in the review session? There were like three people who were in my class. I don't know. I mean, it's like, other people went to my review session. Isn't that funny? It didn't happen last year, but like um, for a year, when the AP had happened, all these people were out of Black one of my reviews. I'll bring the peanut butter straws, but I'll probably make something else. I had them last night, and they're so easy to make, but they just like taste like dough. And it's kind of like. I want to see it. I'm curious. And then. 
That's what I was trying to do. And then it tastes like vinegar. Maybe, maybe. I've had the bread and bacon itself. Well, no. I just put some bread in. My grandma makes it all the time for the recipe. Go back and make it again. Get to my house. Where were you yesterday? So, I think it's on there. Have you seen it before? Why? Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. I don't really want to pay for this. I'm kind of excited about this. It looks really good. The sandwiches look great. Yeah. Stop it. And, then, and, and, and these rolls, I mean, that's a great idea. Actually, we couldn't have planned this together for the two things, could we? No, a great kind of a tea sandwich. Do we have tea? Yeah. And then the great dessert you drink it now. We might have to share sandwiches, but I think you guys can have a laugh. Oh, hey, yeah, you shut up. <laughs> you just provided the logistical support. I heard about that. If someone needs to share, I do have a knife. Can I do it right? Yeah, dude. And then you can do it. You just grab this. That's kind of cute. So let me tell you something we did. We did uh, last year, first semester. Maybe I'll do it second semester. We did a brief thing on immigration, and then everybody made some kind of recipe from their family. I'll tell everybody, hear what I said. We did a thing on immigration, just a brief thing on immigration two years ago, but everybody researched a little bit about their family, and then everyone brought in a recipe from their family. And we, just had a big day. we did it over two days. And that was a, we did it over two Fridays. And that was a, you know, it was an easy, quick little unit, quick little presentation, and then we. Go for it. Do you do a day like that here? Is that, is it? If anybody gets a sandwich, you need to cut. I got a knife here. Make sure everyone gets a piece. <laughs> Okay, everybody. I was telling my dad about the wizard of Oz, and my mom heard, and then she got mad at me. She's like, "You just ruined the wizard of Oz."